and good morning on this overcast Thursday. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, with Talking to Artists, a podcast that's designed for artists for able to understand kind of some of the business that goes behind the actual uh, selling and promoting and managing art that's beyond the actual creation of it. Of course, we talk about that too. I'm also designed for collectors uh, and art lovers just to kind of understand a little bit about the art world, what goes on behind the scenes, how do you buy art, especially now in this digital environment. Um, so a few housekeeping things. Um, I just want to say that uh, I'm going to kind of continue the mantra of shop local, shop your local artists if you can, um, and try and, uh, and avoid maybe some of the big box stores just to make sure that artists will be around next summer when we all want to go out and do the outdoor shows. Um, I'm going to send out a, actually a MailChimp that kind of just has a link to a couple of places that are great to shop for, things like the One of a Kind is still on. I've got some uh, little treasures there. Um, we've got the uh, Artist Network uh, small show. So a lot of the shows are now doing small pieces, which are great for gifts. The Handmade Market. Uh, there's a tons of different links. So anyway, encourage you to do that. So today for our, I think I believe we're at our 29th episode today, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Yelena Yankovic from... Uh, Petrov Gallery. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about how to buy in these kind of weird crazy days and I'm going to, I think I've seen her here, so I'm just going to jump right in and invite her to join us. And we have kind of an interesting, I'm doing, I'm interviewing her right now and then at 11, 12 o'clock I'm going to go on to Petrov's site and she's going to interview me, so that's going to be kind of fun. <laughs> so we're just waiting for her to join us. And I'm once again without internet in my house again in Toronto, so that's sort of frustrating, but hopefully that won't cause any issues with the, um, with the connections. And uh, I know that Yelena was saying the, uh, the Petrov building is actually, I believe, in an old bank, so they have a safe where their office is, and the safe, because it's all surrounded by metal, creates some, um, some kind of interesting online digital challenges in terms of being able to connect. So uh, it looks like she might be having a challenge connecting. But as is often the way these days. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm going to actually... Oh, <laughs> looks like she dropped off anyway. Okay, I'm going to give her a couple minutes to move to a place that's, that's, uh, that's actually good. So um, a couple of other things I just wanted to bring forward then is that uh, my little treasures right now are available on my website and also at the One of a Kind. Um, and they also are eligible for... Uh, free shipping right now, and um, I can add a little handmade note. So that's um, that's often what people are requesting. So, hey, there how are you? Hi, good. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I told them that you're kind of located in a bit of a vault, truly and legit, literally. So <laughs> yeah, it's you never know what you're gonna get. Um, it always kind of legs sometimes, and sometimes it works beautifully. But we're we used to be a bank, so we've got some thick steel vault walls around us. <laughs> it's cool though, because I love your office is actually in the vault, right? Yes, I work in the vault, and yeah. everyone always kind of jokes when they come in, and they're like, did you get in trouble? You're in the vault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my office. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool space. <laughs> yeah, it's cozy. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. So I did a bit of an introduction um, to you, Yelena, and your exhibition manager at Petrov. That's and um, yeah, so I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about, well, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about Petrov Gallery and the history, and I think, I, I think you guys have represented me for about six, seven, six or seven years ago, years now? Which yeah, is, actually, maybe even longer for could be. around there yeah. for sure. Yeah, but yeah, it's. Um, uh, I remember I was really, I'm really. I mean, I still am very honored to be part of the uh, the artist family because I really love Petrov Gallery and the the um, kind of the variety of things that you offer there. But maybe yeah. anyway, tell us about tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the gallery has been around I think for about forty years now at this point. Um, it started at show of hands on Avenue Road and then it was purchased by the Petrovs and moved to this location that we're at now on Eglinton um, and then we had another owner now we have another owner and we have just really developed over such a long time and long period of years and really kind of made a history standing of who we are and what we are in the community and I think you're right in that I find we're very unique in what we offer that we have high-end art and we have gifts and we have all sorts of different beautiful type of types of art and mm -hmm. a variety of sizes a variety of prices a variety of for anyone really so I kind of find that we're unique to that in the city that we offer such a wide range of different types yeah. of art making well I certainly I think I find it's nice that you're 
kind of more in North Toronto as well. Although Eglinton right now is an absolute nightmare for everybody. And it's I'm not sure as it's bad as you think. You <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's gotten a lot better. Everyone's yeah. still really nervous. It, you know, it has its moments. No, well, actually, I think where you are, where you are, it is better. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. you're right. Um, but, uh, but I like the fact that it's kind of in, in the north end of the city, and it's sort of, mm-hmm. it's so convenient, and it's a great one-stop shop for, especially like, you know, bridal gifts and nice exactly. Christmas gifts and retirement parties and corporate gifts and things like that. So it's kind yeah. of, uh, it's really great. Yeah. Um, exactly. And so maybe, well, so you're the exhibition manager at Petroff. Right. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about your um, his. I think you have a degree in art history and then started your curation. But maybe you can talk a little bit about what you do and how you kind of help customers when they come in the door. <laughs> yeah, I studied art history um, and I left after my I finished school after my BA um, because I just started working in galleries right away. Um, a lot of other and are you an art? Do you do you actually create yourself? I don't think I I've ever do. asked you. That. You know what? I'm well. In You're school, shy. <laughs> I am very shy about it. Um, in school, we had to take studio classes, of course. You know, so at yeah. that time, I painted a lot more. Um, and then there was a very long period of time where I just didn't. I'm very shy about it. It's nerve wracking for me. And actually, doing your course at the gallery on, in February earlier this year kind of re- reignited that in me. And I've been painting a lot this year, actually. Oh, I mean, that's a lot. so great is a couple of paintings. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but it's more that you were doing before. Exactly. So yeah, definitely. Thank you because you made it so um, comfortable. Like you made me really kind of feel like it's okay if I make a mistake, like just have fun with which it. She didn't. The piece looked great. So yeah, Yellen is talking about um, creative adventures, which Angela and I have where we do creativity retreats for non-artists. Obviously Yellen is an artist, um, but we partnered with oh. Petroff to do that. And that was yeah. super fun. It was and wonderful. Our clients really loved it. Um, everyone was asking for more. So once COVID we will. slows down, we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll definitely be doing it again. It was a wonderful, wonderful course. You're a great teacher. For sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because when you kind of say that that um, sort of kind of reunited the interest in kind of creating and stuff, that just warms my heart because yeah. that's really kind of what Creative Adventures is about because I was, I mean, I yeah. was in a similar way. I worked, got a Bachelor of Fine Arts and then worked in financial services and technology for many years. And uh, it's kind of hard to figure out how to make that transition unless Definitely. there has to be some sort of a catalyst that kind of goes, okay, I just need to try, you know? Yeah. And I mean, my biggest fear always with painting was I didn't have the confidence to even start. I didn't know how to start or where to start. And I was like, it's not going to be good. I'm just wasting material. <laughs> <laughs> and so you really gave me that confidence of like, it, it doesn't matter how it turns out. It's the, the act of creating art is the art itself sometimes. So, you know, just go for it and you'll see how it turns out and you can play around oh. with it. You can fix it. And you, you really kind of push that in me. So thank you. <laughs> oh, good. Well, and just to make a note, her work, her piece was really great too. So thank you. <laughs> you should be very proud of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, well, and, and you know, it's interesting because I'm really finding with uh, this time with COVID too, I would have, there's a part of it that kind of would have expected the art world would have, the bottom would have dropped out of it because we didn't get to do outdoor shows and a lot of things were canceled, art fairs. But in actual fact, I've experienced the opposite. And I think that people are looking to tap into a bit of joy and a bit of creativity. And are you finding that as well? Yeah, I mean, personally, I have been. I've had that craving to start painting more, and I have been painting more. But I find it really interesting speaking to the artists, because I feel like it's been, like, almost split. There's been some of the artists that are like, yeah, I love this free time. It's great. I can do whatever I want. I can paint as much as I want. And, I mean, obviously, under circumstances, it's not great, but they enjoy the free time. (laughs) And getting enough material is kind of a challenge sometimes. (laughs) That definitely has been something we've been hearing. But then I've also heard heard the the flip side of it from some artists of, I just can't get the motivation. Um, And I can relate to that, too. Sometimes when you are like, okay, I have the time, I should be doing this, it's sort of hard to get yourself in that creative mindset of, like, okay, let me do it when you, when you don't have any other choice sort of thing. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of a, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. You know, like, cause I, I mean, as part of the artist network too, I get that too, where people are like, I just want to be in my studio all the time. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, like every artist wants to do that, but you have to have time for the business and the marketing and the promotion. And then nowadays, of course, getting your website up and running and becoming yeah. familiar with the digital piece of it. So, 
I mean, I think also there could be a fine line of oversaturation in your studio as well, because sometimes you need a breather and a break to get inspiration elsewhere and to kind of take a moment yeah. and rebuild that creativity. That's what I've heard from some of our artists here. Um, but I, I think I mostly feel for our glass artists because oh, yeah. it's been very difficult for them to get into studios. I mean, you know, they don't have studios in their living spaces or in their garages. It's not as easy as, as painters can kind of accommodate and re-switch. Mm -hmm. So that's been really like a shame to hear so many of our glass artists struggling hard because if they're in joint studios, they have to really schedule their time properly, um, you know, using- Well, and even if you can get in and you can produce the work, there's also the fear of shipping. Like if you're buying a piece of art, I'm thinking that I would be a little nervous to buy glass if it has to be shipped, you know, if it's gonna get damaged. And I know some of the beautiful pieces of glass that Petrov carries, they're part of the loveliness of them is just this mm -hmm. ethereal quality and they're very, I don't know, you know, they're long and they're, potentially vulnerable yeah. <laughs> I think it's to shipping but I think I'm a sure lot you of pack them have... really well <laughs> yeah we've kind of become shipping masters I mean I won't say we I'll say Ivan <laughs> <My colleague. laughs> yeah. Ivan the gallery manager is the shipping master here and we just ship all over the world so we've gotten really used to it and people even when they're buying gifts for loved ones elsewhere outside of the country they're like oh I want something simple and easy to ship no glass I'm like don't worry we can ship glass you just get what you like and we'll figure it out so there yeah. is that fear but it's it's doable everything yeah. is everything's manual. well and, and haven't we all haven't we all all of a sudden become like expert shippers of getting great at customs yeah. and, and brokerage and getting great yeah. at digital you know e-commerce which you exactly. know so many years ago a lot of us weren't yeah, yeah, we're seeing like our e-commerce website go up like crazy, which we're so grateful that we've had it up and running. And it's a well-oiled machine for so long now that during this yeah. time, you know, it just it's doing its thing. And a lot of our clients have turned that way, which is, of course, understandable. So we're glad we have that ability to like everything is on our website. Um, so it makes it really easy for yeah. people to view. Well, I think it's also probably great that Petrov's been around and, it, and it's such a community uh, neighborhood that you that you guys are located in. That's so, right. you know, they've probably been there long enough. They see the work. They've had exposure to the work that's there. Uh, and there's also a comfort level with Petrov. So, you know, that also increases the ability for people to be comfortable buying stuff online, even if it's yeah. technically sight unseen, right? Because it comes with that, I don't know, I would say like a guarantee of quality. Yeah, and I think also that community that we have built has given people in us per confidence in us personally because we know so many of our clients personally. Um, mm -hmm. So even if they're buying online, they know who it's go whose hands it's going through and that it they're going to get great customer service and it's all going to end up well, even if they're not speaking to us. Um, and with that, we're seeing like new generations come into the gallery too from clients that we've had for many years now their children are now being sent to us to buy for art and decorating their homes, which is quite lovely too, that we can sort of mm -hmm. see that, that pass down of, of new art coming and new clients coming to the gallery. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. fun. And, to see. <laughs> and are you finding, um, are people just buying online or are they kind of calling you to talk about it or what's kind of, what's the, what is your see, what are you seeing your customer look like? These We're days? seeing both. We're seeing both. Um, there's definitely been a jump in online for sure. And even in like big paintings, which before larger paintings, people were always a little bit more kind of slower to purchase online right away and wanted to come in and see it. And now big paintings are going online easy. Um, mm -hmm. But we still have often clients call like in the past couple of weeks, the amount of phone conversations and FaceTime conversations that I've had for like hours with some clients talking about possibilities and showing them FaceTime options. And it's still, I'm actually really grateful for it. So, cause I love that client communication and relationship that we build. And I really miss the clients coming in, honestly, cause it's so nice to get those conversations going. Um, so it's been good to still be able to do that over the phone and over FaceTime for people who need a little bit more of a talk through to it, through it, which I totally get like art is so personal and, I know what we have here. You don't know all of the thousands of pieces that we have at the gallery. So when I make like that right mm -hmm. suggestion for someone, it feels great. So well, and I, and I know too. It's, when we did our when we did our creative adventure, for example, we got a tour of kind of the underbelly of Petrov Gallery downstairs, exactly. and I was shocked and amazed at how much work you actually have down there. So I yeah. mean, 
that makes a lot of sense then. First of all, you'd want to have it on your website, but also that you kind of go, okay, so even though this piece isn't in the gallery, I think this piece would be amazing for your space, right? Exactly. I mean, our basement is downstairs the exact same size as you see upstairs of the gallery. So it's a lot of storage and a lot more work. And we are constantly overfilling it with work <laughs> um, because we just want a lot of options for people. And we get so excited. Well, oh, we want that piece too and that piece too. Um, so sometimes we need to just like take two days to go downstairs and organize when we get too excited about getting work. <laughs> um, but it's also really fun bringing the clients down and showing the kind of, we say like our little VIP access down into the basement to see yeah. the stuff that isn't on display because it's hard for people to understand just how much we have without actually seeing it all at, in one. <laughs> yeah. And so what happens, so what's, so if someone besides they, uh, they buy something online and then they receive it and it's the color wasn't quite what they expected. Is there, what's kind of the process there? Yeah, we have 30 days for exchange or store credit. Um, online is, that's a bit of a, a different rather than on the phone conversation. Like when we speak to people, we let them know all of our policies and we have an approval process so that you can take a piece home and try it for 72 hours before you fully commit to it. So we typically suggest that with larger paintings because you ne you might fall in love with it here, but you never know how to look in your space. You want to make sure yeah. that it's really suited to you, live with it for a couple of days, you know, that there isn't something that's throwing you off about it. So we usually always suggest the approval process and digital placements. Um, I do digital placements where they'll send us photos of their walls and we can digitally place the painting onto their walls to get a virtual idea. So those are all really good first steps. Um, but even if someone buys a piece and they're not sure about it, there's always th the 30 days for exchange or store credit. We want to make sure that whatever you get, you're happy with and that you love, yeah. you know, we're not going to force anything on you. Art is very personal. It needs to be what you want and what you love. It does seem to me though, that, uh, in actual fact, if you love it on the website, you're going to love it even better in real life. Cause yeah. No matter how beautifully and professionally you take your photos, it just, uh, I know certainly with my stuff, it just doesn't really communicate the same way as yeah. seeing it in real life. So, A hundred percent. I tell everyone that if you like it online, you're going to like it 10 times more in person because you can uh -huh. see all of the details. It's vibrant. I mean, it has life. Art has life to it when you see it. Um, oh, yeah. So it makes a big difference. So that's why sometimes people that are nervous to buy online, that's sort of a line that, that I use to explain to them. Like, if you like it online, you like it way more. But it is always better to to see it in person. I, I totally get that. Well, it also helps alleviate the risk of people kind of go, okay, I hear what you're saying, but I don't quite totally believe you. So exactly. once I see it in real life, I know that I have the ability to return it if I need to. But exactly, I, I, I mean, I have that policy as well. And I've got a zero risk commission policy, as you know. And I mean... I don't think it ever actually gets to that point where people return it because by then they're, they're invested in it and they've done the research and they've seen it and, you know, exactly. And they fall in love with it, which is great. That's the point, right? <laughs> yeah. And with commissions is like um, sort of the same concept, but also with that, I always say, if you love the artist's work, you're going to love what you're going to get um, no matter what. Yeah. There's no way that if you like everything that Kate Taylor does and she does a commission for you that you're going to go mm, that one piece. I don't <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is really well let's hope not anyway <laughs> yeah um but you you're definitely really great with commissions of making small alterations here and there when people need it and, and also because you know you you have a good amount of inventory and you you're like us all artists just want people to be happy and to love the piece that they get so yeah I think it's also like I like this the challenge of commissions too you know I think that mm -hmm. There are, there are different types of artists. I'm sure you run into this, that some, maybe some of your artists do commissions and some don't. Um, and for me, I kind of like the push sometimes to go in a different direction or different color palette or something that I wouldn't normally do on my own. Like it's just, yeah. So if that's one of the reasons I do so many is, um, is because of that. I kind of, I don't know. I like the people part of it too, of course, like going back yeah. and forth and the dynamics of it. But I think mostly it's like, like I, those black ones that I was working on, actually the one you've got behind you, which is I black. <laughs> I love that series too. I need to do more of the unity series actually, but, mm -hmm. um, but it, part of it too came from the fact that I was doing this commission for someone. And she's like, I really want black and silver. And I'm like, well, it's not really a color combination I work with very often, yeah. but once I kind of got my teeth into it, it's like, that's just pretty cool. It's fine. I give you a new idea. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that is the beauty of commissions too, that um, clients might kind of, like you said, suggest something that you never thought of, but you're right. There's definitely a mixed feeling amongst artists. Some of them don't like it. Um, and I can understand that side too. And so a lot of our clients yeah. can as well that I always explain, you know, you have to get that it's artists. They want to put their artistic feel into every painting like it's not machine done work so it's going to have a personal touch it's going to have a personal creativity um and I think that is the beauty of, of handmade art and one-of-a-kind mm -hmm. art too that it's not paint by numbers you can't have an actual image that you're going to expect but it's going to be great no matter what especially because it has that artist touch to it so it's cool it's the energy of the artist exactly yeah exactly Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say it's, it's great that, you know, you started this series off of a commission and kind of ran with it and made it your own too and added your touch to it. And this is like the black ones are some of my favorites because I don't know, most people have now noticed on these videos, I'm always wearing black. <laughs> well, you think and your painting was very black too, right? Blacks and purples, if I recall, exactly. that you were doing too. Yeah. I yeah. like the dark colors. I like the dark tones. So when these came in, I was like, oh my God, they're my favorite. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with these. So I'm like, I'm putting my favorite Kate Taylor up for this video. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it, that, the, the, color, the whole thing of color too brings up an interesting point. And you must run into this when you're talking to clients is that, depending on geographically where they're located, especially if they're outside of Canada, um, countries and regions have kind of their own color palettes too. Like I know some of these like black ones probably wouldn't go too well in Florida where everything is light and it just becomes too dominant in the space. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, but I, I feel like I do find it a little bit more personal. Um, there are clients that come in and I can relate to their taste so much. And so then I'm pointing out every piece that I love and they love too. And then there are the clients that want something completely different than what I, like I personally would choose, but they're still beautiful. And then I just love when they ask me, well, what's your favorite? And I'm like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what my favorite is. Like, you love what you love. And he says, oh, That's right. My favorite's not going to be in your house. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious. I, I'd like to know. And I just point out, like, the polar opposites of what they chose. <laughs> but it's, it's all personal, right? Um, that's the beauty of art. And... I don't, I don't necessarily see it by region as much, but I feel like that definitely would be a factor, 100%. But in general, I think I notice people lean a lot more towards color um, mm -hmm. and vibrant because especially now interior design is a lot more kind of neutral tones and your whites and your creams and grays. And so people are using art to accentuate color and life and personality into their homes, which I love that. I think yeah. that's what art is, is meant for. So a lot of people are going more towards vibrant colors to give that pop in their, in their spaces. Yeah. I, I'm especially noticing that yeah, during COVID. Like I think people mm -hmm. are like, they're literally saying, I just need, I need a bit of joy on my walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And exactly. so uh, yeah. I mean, it's different when you're not spending that much time in your house, but people are spending so much time in their homes now. Yeah. Um, and so I think artists it, have been feeling that too. We just got Eleanor Loden and she oh, love her. Did, so beautiful. She was my and she was my guest a few months ago. Yeah, I love her work. I saw that. Yeah, exactly. And she brought us the garden series. And before that, she had her umbrella series. And the garden series is, I mean, I can I can show as well while I speak about yes. it. Yes, let's promote um, Eleanor because she's great. Yeah, but it's it's a good story for the kind of COVID. So like this was her her umbrella series, which they are colorful, but they have you know, a rainy vibe to them, but they're beautiful. And well, then we have her. And they're a little bit solitary too. Yes. And then her garden yeah. series just really is so vibrant. And she said that she, she created this while the lockdown was happening because she was like, I was just so isolated in my home and yeah, I wanted some vibrancy and some color and some life. And I think we, we are really all feeling that for sure after the lockdown. Yeah. So, it's, well, uh, and it's interesting, it's, even like the last few commissions I've done, people are like, yeah, I want more pink, more pink. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I love pink, right? It's one of my favorite colors, but I'm always a little bit careful about how much I put in because it's not for everybody. But it's so interesting that that recently has been the color. And I see in Eleanor's too, like big, like happy pinks and oranges and yellows. I actually feel like I've been seeing pinks and purples for a couple of years now. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's coming out a little bit more obviously now it started a, a, maybe if two years ago of little like undertones of pink 
um, which was sort of a new thing that I was seeing in a lot of our painters and in interior design as well. And I think now it's really like, okay, we're going to bring pink to the surface. And I love it. I think it's a really beautiful highlighting color. So yeah. it's, it's a nice kind of shift and purples too. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I, I know I look back at some of my work even two or almost three years ago doing a lot of like the lavenders and mm -hmm. um, yeah. And which now, now is interesting. It's kind of like at the time you kind of go, Oh, I love them. And then people aren't quite ready. <laughs> you know, the artist often is ahead of the curve a little bit in terms of right. where designers or, or collectors are. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Too. And so given that, given the, um, the huge different range and your own personal kind of biases, which of course are natural, um, <laughs> how does your team choose which artists to bring on board with Petrox? I think you've brought up quite a few new people on recently, which is uh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, we did. I mean, I think after being closed for three months, we were all just kind of like, let's find the right pieces for clients. Let's find the right artists. Let's just do everything. We got really kind of energized to be back at work so we, we brought on quite a few new artists um, because we always so wanted to, we saw people were looking for art after being home for so long looking at their walls wanting to change things um, so we wanted to make sure we had some new options as well and some ver more variety mm -hmm. um, the, the process in which we choose art we have a submission process online um, so we'll send a lot of inqu inquiring artists to that link, but we also do a lot of searches on, on Instagram and social media and Facebook. Um, that is where I, I find a lot of the artists that we have brought into the gallery. Um, and then also referrals, like artist referrals or client referrals as well. Sometimes clients go, I saw this artist, you have to have it. I thought of Petrov Gallery right away. Um, or even artists will, I mean, I think you've even referred a few art, few other artists to us will say, mm -hmm. you know, I have this artist friend, I, I worked with this person, they're really great. And then we all kind of look as a team. Yeah. And we, we decide together how we think it'll fit in the gallery, um, you know, how our clients will react, all that sorts of thing. Well, and it's, it's interesting too, like I have, there's, you know, you sometimes you see on some of these online Facebook groups, it's just like, I don't know why I bother spending time on social media, because I never sell art on Instagram. Really all about selling the art on Instagram. It's about getting your exposure out there and connecting to clients and connecting to galleries. Exactly. You know? yeah. So obviously that's where you, I mean, I know I have the gallery I have in Agunquit, like Maine was exactly that. She'd followed me for almost two years on so Instagram. Well, of course, I don't know that, but yeah. you don't know where those, those things are going. So it's always worth I think, putting the effort into your social media, even though I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to or like to. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think sometimes that's a second thought to artists of um, galleries, <laughs> which is fair. <laughs> you know, we you, it's, you know we want to sell and we want to make our clients happy first and foremost. Um, but even art shows and art fairs this year, I definitely miss them. But we regularly go to them to find new artists as well. And I've often met artists there that go, I haven't had a great, like a lot of success or luck selling this year, but I'm so thrilled that you came and you found me and now I'm part of Petrov Gallery, yeah. you know, so it was still worth the while and it still was something that they, they gained from it. So definitely those yeah. sorts of fields and, and alleyways of shows and Instagram and social media galleries are lurking back there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I guess, it, I guess for you too, like it must be nice to, um, to be able to actually kind of, at an art fair, you get to know the artist a little bit in person too, because presumably it's got to be a combination of the work, but also you want to have an artist that's going to be, you know, professional and delivers and, you know, it kind of has a bit of at least the business savvy part of it as well. A hundred percent. I think it's also just kind of knowing off the bat the, the personality and just how the relationship's going to be. Um, we've yeah. rarely had like problems with any of our artists I mean sometimes I have to hound to get work <laughs> yes I know I'm bad for that sometimes <laughs> I know <laughs> you're, you're, you're very good especially considering how much you have on your plate and all of, you're like art art superwoman in in the city everything that you do um but it's all yeah you're right it's kind of you know getting a feel for the person as well of what can we expect and how are we going to work together and what sort of relationship is it going to be um sometimes we meet artists can't commit to giving us work regularly and full time. So we kind of have them in the back end as a roster artist of we'll contact you when we have someone interested or um, yeah. if we think of something perfect for, for you. So it's kind of a more consultant sides as well. 
Oh, that's cool. Sorry, I've got something going on outside my window. I don't know. And do you ever do you ever have conversations with your artists, like in terms of, um, you know, when a new artist comes into the gallery and it's kind of like the new thing, right? Um, do you have artists conversations with artists if we find the work is getting stale or if it's the direction the mo it's moving into a direction maybe that isn't as compatible as it was a few years ago or like what, yeah. what kind of relationship do you have with your artists that way we're not shy we're <laughs> we're pretty open and honest about what we find is working isn't working i mean even if they bring work in and and we kind of go this doesn't suit what you've been doing or it's not up to par on what we're used to from you. Like we're not shy on saying that because it's, I think it's just beneficial for everyone all around. Um, we want to make sure that our clients are getting the highest quality and the best quality and, and you know, what we want to be shown as delivering. Um, and yeah. we also want to make sure that our artists and that we are working to the best of our abilities as well. And, I mean, also with that too, different styles fit different environments. Like some, a lot of the time artists will come in and go, this is my best series. It sells a ton and it just doesn't work for us. Our clients kind of go in a different direction and that happens often too. So obviously it's beneficial to everyone to have work in the gallery that we are happy with, that we know our clients will be happy with, that we know will work for us. And that is the best that we can expect, that we can hope for from them. So we have those conversations often um, with new artists. I let them know every time that it's, you know, new art needs some time to be digested in the gallery and to be viewed by clients and um, to kind of settle in. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that I always give a lot more time um, to, to, to get the, the vibe and to get the feel here. Um, but with other pieces, sometimes it comes and we love it. And then we just sometimes we'll even notice clients don't respond well to it. And we'll say, well, you know what? Your clients aren't responding well. We love it. So use it somewhere else. Sell it somewhere else if it's not working here. So yeah. it's just the benefit to everyone, I think. And so what, what should an artist expect? Like say I say um, Petrov decides to take me on as an artist and you, I give you my I don't know, 10 pieces of best work that I have, mm -hmm. like in terms of the relationship and the timing. Cause I also hear uh, some people kind of go, yeah, like they've had my work for three weeks and they haven't sold anything yet. So I'm going to pull it. Right. <laughs> and I'm yeah. sure that, that makes your, I'm just thinking from a business point of view, that makes it difficult for you if you have an artist that potentially might pull the work, but is there kind of an expectation for how as an artist, you kind of get a sense that maybe the gallery for you isn't working if they're not quite as upfront as you guys are. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we've had to have those tough conversations with artists. Um, sometimes they do get a little impatient. And I try as soon as we onboard a new artist to give them this the kind of spiel that I did right now of it takes time, give us some time to to work with it, to promote mm -hmm. it, to to let it settle on, on our website, on our social media, with our, with our clients. Um, and, you know, if they get impatient and they're selling a lot faster elsewhere, like by all means, you you sell faster elsewhere. That's great. Um, but we also have like over 200 artists that we represent. So we're pushing all of you equally and we're promoting all of you equally. So there is sometimes a few tough conversations of um, artists getting frustrated, but it's really just kind of figuring out a balance of what's best for, for them and for us and how we can find uh, something that works for both or it doesn't work anymore. Um, and that's, like any relationship, really, any working yeah. relationship or anything. So it's really just finding what works. Well, and it's putting the effort in. I think both the artist and the gallery have to put the effort in, right? And it, this is kind of another question yeah. that uh, is, is kind of coming up from, you know, the fact that because of COVID, artists also are way more visible online and on social media. And um, I know that there are some galleries that are, they accept that's just kind of the way that it is. And there are other galleries that aren't so happy with that loss of kind of exclusivity, especially galleries on the West Coast, which tend to be much more exclusive than what we have in Toronto, mm -hmm. like in terms of requiring exclusivity. Um, more of an old model, I think. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's a bit of a tough model sometimes. Um, and artists ask us that often. We definitely don't have exclusivity, but we do ask, you know, don't go to a gallery right next door to us because that just doesn't work for anyone. Again, it's just not beneficial yeah. to anyone. Well, it's not respectful. Yeah. I mean, from both parts. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, you know, we also say if you're in multiple galleries in the city, let's try and keep different series. Um, because, again, that's helping each of us. Some uh, clients know what to get here, what to get there um, and keep it different and, and just respectful and send your clients to us. And I mean, that's the other thing, too, that it is a partnership and it is working together. We sometimes artists forget that they go, I dropped off work and it's going to be easy sales. And I'm like, well, let's promote each other. Yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. Help each other out. So that's also yeah. sometimes conversations need to be had with that as well. But it's tough. I mean, that's what galleries are for. We're here to do the nitty gritty work so that the artists can do the art and can be creative. Yeah. Um, and well, and you're spending all that. you're spending your eight hours a day on the business piece of it. And certainly artists aren't well, so hopefully we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, exactly. Exactly. So that's really what the gallery still stands for and is around for still because there are so many artists that come in and are like I can't handle the business side I can't handle social media and we're like that's okay that's what we're here for like mm -hmm. you know just help us out for with what we ask and and we got that for you so that's the the support that we give for sure yeah well it's it's interesting that uh sometimes there's a, ch it's a challenge for artists too because I recently had somebody who reached out through my website and they said that they liked this piece and they wanted a different size. And then about, I don't know, half an hour later, I got an email from a gallery that kind of said, oh, this is a client, this piece is just sold, they might be interested in the commission. Well, they were the same person, right? Yeah. And so obviously it's it's the gallery's client, it's the gallery's sale. And so I've got this weird, <laughs> you know, three-way conversation now to kind of, you know, yeah. get what the client wants. But I think sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes that's kind of a little bit hard to navigate because you're not often sure as an artist too where some of those clients come from. And a lot exactly. of them, they truly are the gallery's clients, but you don't know that until sometimes after the fact or. Yeah. You know. And I think it's sometimes we are surprised by how many clients come and speak to us and then go to the artist directly. I think people expect that there's going to be a different price point or something different is going to happen with the artist. And it's very, yeah. it's very difficult sometimes to explain, like we do exactly what the artist does. We just do it for them. Like, don't bother them. <laughs> We're well, yeah, and, and the price and the price point is the same, right? I mean, kind exactly. of the reality is, if you buy from Petroff or you buy directly from me, it's the same price. Exactly, there's but no it's, difference in that. Yeah, but it's it really is, about it is who hard. owns the relationship, I think. Yeah, but it is hard yeah. to navigate for sure, knowing where clients come from. Um, you know, it's it's kind of we do the best that we can, and we talk about it and we figure it out, and it's just a, a respectful relationship kind of thing that. If you have yeah, an inkling, sure. you call us. If not, it's, you know, so. Yeah. Well, and I think what the artist has to remember, too, is that, you know, while I'm hanging out at the cottage or going on vacation, well, pre-COVID, on vacation somewhere, right? Yeah. Someone else is still selling my art, right? And so that's that part of that relationship you have to remember um, when you yeah. kind of think, okay, you're giving the 50%. But that's really so that, you know, you have multiple people selling your work in multiple places, and you don't have to be the only one who does that. There's nothing better yeah, than coming exactly. back from vacation, having a check in your, in your mailbox, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and I have that conversation also with a lot of artists too, because when clients reach out to them after they reached out to us, they go, okay, well, should I just deal with this? And I'll still, you know, give you your, your portion. And I'm like, no, that's what we're here for. I'm going to deal with it for you. Mm -hmm. Like that's what our contribution is for you to, to help that side of things. So the artist can do their art. So you can, focus on your creativity and we can do the, the, the business side and the numbers end and the discussions and the drop-offs and the pickups and, and the inventory. <laughs> yeah. Inventory, bubble wrap, clearing, uh, framing, all of that. <laughs> yeah. I know. I just spent half a yesterday doing that. I'm like, I'd love to not do that, but <laughs> yeah. okay. Well, I think we're actually almost out of yeah. time because at 12 o'clock you're interviewing me. So then you get to grill me with all the questions and put me on the hot seat. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there anything well, else to maybe just give a me. maybe just give a quick a quick blurb about Petrov, where to find you, the other things you carry. I know you do jewelry and high end glass and Judaica and super cool kaleidoscopes. Yeah, we're kind of like a one stop shop for everything and especially for holidays right now. Um I mean I've gotten all my gifts from the gallery. <laughs> because there's such a variety um, and it's all handmade and one of a kind which you just, I think is just so beautiful like you said shop local support your your local businesses um, we're on Eglinton between Allen Road and Bathurst we're doing curbside pickup 
we're doing phone orders, we're doing online orders, we're doing gift wrapping. I'm the best at gift wrapping, so it's going to look beautiful. Um, we do framing, we have jewelry, we have ceramics, we have wood, really beautiful charcuterie boards, serving pieces. We have a lot of Judaica as well. Paintings, of course, glass. I, I don't even know if I'm missing anything. We have so much. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a big list. Exactly. Okay. And everything's on our website. So go to PetroffGallery.com, take a view, give us a call, whatever you need, we're here for you. Okay. Sounds amazing. Okay. Thanks and I will so talk to you later. Thank me, you so much, Yelena. That was great. I really enjoyed it. Bye. Thank <laughs> Sorry. Thank you so much. That was great. Like so much information. I always have to be careful. I watch the time because uh, we want to make sure we can kind of capture it all. But uh, definitely go and check out Petrov Gallery. I bought some beautiful glass from them and I just, uh, I just love it every time. I have to sort of touch it every time I go past my dining room table. Um, and so I will be my, to my process and whatever else you probably have already heard way too much about me anyway already. But at 12 o'clock um, on there at hashtag uh, Petrov Gallery. So thank you so much for joining us. Next week we have Marissa Sweet. So she is the last of our artists for 2020. And then the beginning of January, I'm just going to do kind of an open ask me anything kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. And then we've got a couple of other artists that are booked into uh, next year. So thank you so much for joining me and have a fabulous day. Bye.